first at 9 this Sunday, the 7th of July 2024. Finance and Security President Ranil Vikramasinghe highlights the need of foreign investments to safeguard Sri Lanka's banking sector. Efforts underway to allocate 130 billion rupees for SME interest relief reveals President's Chief of Staff. Debt Depreciation State Minister of Finance reveals a 2.76% decrease in government's total debt stock within the first four months of this year. Marchers and placards. Over 200 trade unions set to begin strike action from tomorrow over unresolved salary discrepancy. Obey Vishwasi Dino Sinsudain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labat at Hacker. Mevelave, Ranil Tamai. From Adaderana, this is Adaderana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Other Derna First at 9. I'm Aditya Drisingha joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now taking you straight to your top story this evening, President Ranil Vikramasinghe says that due to the 8 billion US dollar debt relief received by Sri Lanka through the restructuring of foreign debt, the country now has the opportunity to pursue a new economic model. Speaking at the Bankers Forum in Colombo yesterday, he highlighted the pivotal role that banks play as Sri Lanka's economy revives and went on to say that banks must be protected to protect the country. Meanwhile, joining the event, President's National Security Advisor and Chief of Staff Sagal Ratnayaka revealed that the government and the Asian Development Bank will allocate 130 billion rupees to grant interest relief to small and medium scale enterprises through the banking sector. The Bankers Forum, organized by the National Bankers Association, was held in Colombo yesterday. President Ranil Vikramasinghe attended the forum along with President's National Security Advisor and Chief of Staff, Sagal Ratnayaka. Our people are still struggling to survive. Even though the private sector and the government have increased salaries and wages to the highest possible level, many still struggle to survive. There aren't enough jobs in the country at the moment too. Our next aim is to increase the incomes of all Sri Lankans. Logistics is one of Sri Lanka's most rapidly growing sectors, creating numerous direct and indirect employment opportunities. We must be ready to accommodate those changes. While those changes manifest themselves, we must develop Sri Lanka's small and medium scale enterprises. To that end, the government has allocated 100 billion rupees along with an additional 30 billion rupees from the Asian Development Bank. We hope to disperse those funds through the banking system and provide interest relief to small and medium scale entrepreneurs. We cannot protect the country without protecting its banking system. If the banking system collapses, so will the country. The government and the Ministry of Finance worked closely with the banks and we are now seeing the results of that collaboration. We have postponed debt servicing for four years and reduced our debt by 8 billion US dollars. That gives us the flexibility to adopt a different economic model. The banking sector has a very crucial role to play today. How are we going to fund our initiatives? That is the most pressing concern. Do the banks have sufficient funds? We must attract foreign investments which will strengthen our banks. However, we have not reached that point yet. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. A Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna founder and former finance minister Basil Rajapaksha says that the SLPP will continue supporting President Ranil Vikramasinghe in the interest of the country's future. He made those remarks at the Kalut, in Kalutra rather, while celebrating the 27th anniversary of MP Rohit Abegunavardhana's political career. Former President Mahindra Rajapaksha, who was also at the event, highlighted that many who cowered in fear while Sri Lanka was grappling with the crisis are now attempting to claim the spotlight and urge the public to confront those challenges and stand steadfastly behind a leader who will propel the country forward. Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna MP Rohit Abhigunavardhana celebrated 27 years in politics yesterday afternoon at the Kalutara Stadium. President Ranil Vikramasinghe, former presidents Mahindra Rajapaksha and Gotabe Rajapaksha, as well as the founder of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna Basil Rajapaksha, graced the event. The eighth volume of a book comprising speeches made by MP Abhigunavardhana in Parliament was launched during the ceremony. <laughs> Janadipati Ranil Vikramasinghe, 
We did not support President Ranil Vikramasinghe out of fear. Please know that we neither fear the President nor do we owe him anything. We supported you sincerely during the recent past and I assure you that we will continue to support you as long as you protect this country and its citizens. As the national organizer, Nama Rajapaksha, you and I share a massive responsibility at the moment. Just as we led the party to victory in the past elections, we have the responsibility of leading our enormous party to victory in the future too, for the sake of our country and its people. My political brand was built around Mahinda Rajapaksha. Just as I supported your father, I pledge to you before my constituents here in Kalutara that I will wholeheartedly support you in your journey to be the next Mahinda Rajapaksha. Leader who abandoned the country during its collapse and fled without facing challenges are now trying to reclaim the spotlight by narrating tall tales. They know they cannot win. Their only aim is to destabilize the country again. Therefore, I urge you to confront these challenges and stand steadfastly behind a leader who will propel this country forward. Many wonder why I sit beside Mahinda Rajapaksha. Allow me to explain. We were adversaries in the 1970s. We were never on the same side. So why now? I had worse disagreements with former President Chandrika Bandar Naika Kumaratunga. Yet no one questioned me when I allied myself with her. The reason I support Mahinda Rajapaksha is straightforward. A pivotal parliament gathering occurred a week before the 9th of May 2022. A faction of the government left the government and crossed over to the opposition. Several opposition MPs suggested that if Mahinda Rajapaksha's government collapsed, the opposition leader should assume the office of the Prime Minister. However, when Mahinda Rajapaksha resigned, the opposition leader declined to take on that responsibility. He had a responsibility to take charge during the national crisis. When a country faces collapse, all major political parties must collaborate. Imagine the consequences if I had rejected support from the SLPP. The rupee could have depreciated to over 450 against the dollar. Not just oil, even coconut oil could have vanished from the market. Today, I have the flexibility to attend meetings of both the UNP and the SLPP. And just yesterday, I was with the members of the SJB. I could attend their meetings as well if I choose to. There is no one left to oust me. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake. Register now. Meanwhile, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa addressed recent accusations leveled against him by President Ranil Vikramasinghe and asserted that he did not avoid the responsibility of serving as the country's Prime Minister during the height of the crisis. Instead, the opposition leader asserts that President Ranil Vikramasinghe claimed the premiership before President Gotabe Rajapaksha could agree to the conditions of democracy listed publicly by the opposition leader as a prerequisite to him taking up the position. Sajid Premadasa made those remarks at the Samagi Janabalavegia's Jana Power Program in Gampaha. Samagi Janabalavegia's Jana Power Program, organized by parliamentarian Ajit Manna Perumar, was held in Gampaha under the patronage of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. <laughs> Several former mayors and local government representatives of SLPP joined the Samak Janabala Vegia during the event. Dupat Janata, Laksa Visena, Laksa Hatta, Vadikar and Diakon, Gotake, Devani Kala, Devani Kote, Adina running Likram Singa Tidia, and a day in Ape Naik at Viti there. Sajid Premadasa, Janadi Pativare, Yatate, Apita Devan the Kare Baria Tino Karan, Arapasa de Giaur Duname, Navata Genoa, Wagema, Ita Isarahade Andone, Honda, Padia Gavana Rakia, Nirmane Karan known, Abri Vivasaka, Avasavan, Bikaran known, Aurudu da Hata, Apisi at the Dahayagane, Ape Rata, Sialuma, Ansavaling, Wardenekaran Venua, Api, Dune Venerata King, Dune Vetcharataka. Pata Banana. Ape Ratata make a Puluan Kenekatamai, Sajid Premadasa, Matituma, Jana di Patuma, Hatiata, Api Bala Purutu, and Uke Kanda, Hatiata, Uta Shakti, the Ravadakaran. 
Janathava idiriya dennata Some are so afraid of facing the public why are they so afraid this time we will secure a historic win for the past few days the president has been saying that i rejected the responsibility of being the prime minister i would like to remind him that when former president gotabaya rajapaksha requested to take up the position i presented my conditions to him publicly i represented him in the conditions of democracy and i urged him to comply however before he could agree president ranil vikram singha took up the position former president sirisena asked me to take over the premiership from ranil vikram singha 71 times during the constitution coup of 2018 i did not betray him back then those who were rejected by the people and couldn't even secure a single seat in parliament are not satisfied until they secure power we do not have such problems because we know we have the power of the citizens ape yuge kriyatmaka karannata oba sielu denama kapa wenne kiyala mama illimak karanawa star dish wash belly tel indul basu ense de star dish wash magic topica crunchy goodness for hunger on the go Now as rumors loom regarding the possible postponement of the presidential poll, Deputy Leader of the United National Party Ruan Vijayawardena asserts that President Ranil Wickremesinghe will definitely contest the upcoming election this year. Meanwhile, SLPP MP Dammika Pereira affirms that he will withdraw from politics if he is not nominated as the SLPP's presidential candidate. With that, let's take a look at the latest in the political arena. මේ පළාත් පාලන මැතිවරණය අනීතිකව නතර කිරීමෙන් මේ ජනාධිපතිර පලපුරුද්දක් තියෙනවා. යම් දේශපාලනික කුමන්ත්‍රණයකට තමයි වික්‍රමසිංහ ජනාධිපතිවර සහෝගේ කණ්ඩායම ලෑස්ති වෙන්නේ. වික්‍රමසිංහ ජනාධිපතිවරයා ලේනව මගින් මුට්ටිය දානවා. රංගේ බණ්ඩාර මගින් මුට්ටිය දානවා. ජනාධිපතිවරණයේ කල් දැමීමක් සිදු වෙන්නේ නැහැ කිසිම. It is impossible to postpone the presidential election. The general public will not allow it. Do not engage in useless conversations. Please direct your attention to the state of the nation at the moment. Every single day President Ranil Wickremesinghe and his aides drives the country to its destruction. Even if Sajit Premadasa or Anuradha Sanayake is elected, the same will happen. E wageema Anuradha Sanayake mahathela awa siddha wenne eka. ජනාධිපතිවරණය කල් දානවා කියනවා එක එක කට කතා යනවා නමුත් මම පැහැදිලිව කියන්නට ඕනේ ජනාධිපතිවරණය පිළිනවා ඒ ජනාධිපතිවරණයට අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම රනිල් වික්‍රමසිංහ මැතිතුමා අපේක්ෂකයේ කැඩිට ඉදිරිපත් වෙන බව මේ අවස්ථාවේදී ඉතාමත් පැහැදිලිව කියන්නට ඕනේ බුදු යන්න පෙරමුණ the SLPP will win if they choose president Ranil Wickremesinghe as our candidate for the upcoming election otherwise we will lose so we must decide if we want to form the next government or not I don't think they are that backwards in their thinking. I hope it does not happen. Even Norway, wah. Taman, taman, taman. Kya ne kena tuve? Hamoge me veda ganne pula naaye koon na. Ekar mang mitra inni. Ek koon na Sri Lanka podo jana pere muna na thir ne ekaran none. Ego langge jana adi pati apeksha kya khau da gela. Mama inne tang mama ay desa palni. Him karan bala purti ne kine kine ne. When the election draws close, it is refreshing to see how the rich start caring about the common people. I also urge the general public to take as much as you want right now because you would not get a time like this again. Somehow, if the SLPP decides to nominate Dammika Perera as their presidential candidate, the next election will boil down to five candidates. उटिंगे Now in other local news the public sector trade unions decided to launch a nationwide trade union action tomorrow over several unresolved issues primarily concerning salaries accordingly more than 200 trade unions will initiate the trade union action commencing tomorrow although several health sector trade unions refused to support the two day strike meanwhile speaking in this regard state minister of finance ranjit simbala pitiya highlighted that no salary increments will be allowed this year The trade unions collective announced that over 200 trade unions in the public sector will resort to a two-day trade union action from tomorrow by calling in sick. 
A number of trade unions affiliated with public management, agriculture, welfare, engineering, surveyors, postal and Gramanilidari officers are expected to join this trade union action tomorrow. The strike will be launched primarily in protest of the 25,000 rupee allowance given to executive grade public service officers. The United Health Workers Union is sure to support the trade union action tomorrow by withdrawing from their official duties. We will withdraw from our duties on the 9th of this month from 8 in the morning till 12 noon. We will then conduct our protests in front of hospitals. Similarly, the Salon Teachers Union added that they will join the trade union action by reporting in sick, demanding solutions to the prevailing salary anomalies. Both teachers and principals will withdraw from their official duties by calling in sick to join the strike actions on the 9th of July. We will definitely engage in these strike actions demanding solutions to our concerns. We assure you that we will continue to fight until our issues are resolved. However, several health sector trade unions, including the All Salon Nurses Union, revealed that they will not join the public sector trade union action scheduled to be carried out tomorrow. We will not join the trade union action tomorrow. However, we will definitely support any and all efforts to oust this government. Against this backdrop, several top legislators, including State Minister of Finance Ranjit Siembalapitiya, reiterated that no salary increments or allowances will be granted in 2024. Most trade unions are politically motivated. I employ anyone who knows how to grant salary increments to state sector employees under the current budget constraints to share their knowledge with us. This country will never be developed if people continue to organize strikes and protests. He might be out of his senses when he speaks of governance. There is no remedy for insanity. Insanity cannot be vested in the public. Now, the Natural Hazards Early Warning Center of the Meteorological Department issued ambulance, amber warnings rather, for heavy rains for some areas in the western and Sabaragamu provinces and in the Kandy district. The Med Department further forecasts that prevailing heavy downpours are anticipated in, to continue further in the southwestern part of the island during the next few days. Followed by extreme rainfall of above 100 mm, strong winds are also expected over the western slopes of the central hills, northern, north central and northwestern provinces and in the Trincomalee, Hambantota and Munaragala districts. As a result, the Med Department urges the public to take adequate precautions to minimize damages caused by strong winds and lightning during the rains. Now, the final rights of late former opposition leader and leader of the Ilanke Tamil Arasukachi R. Sampanthan were performed at the, tr the Trincomalee Hindu Cemetery this afternoon. The veteran political leader's final rites were performed according to Hindu customs. Sampanthan was 91 years old at the time of his passing. The remains of the late leader were brought to the parliament premises last Wednesday for the public to pay their final respects, after which the body was taken to his residence in Trincomalee. President Ranil Vikramasinghe was among the many who attended the funeral to pay their final respects. The veteran leader's funeral procession left his residence in Trincomalee this afternoon and made its way through Trincomalee town towards the Trincomalee Hindu Cemetery. The final rites were performed according to Hindu customs at the Trincomalee Public Cemetery. Now in other local news, a woman was stabbed to death by her husband last evening in the Ariali area of the Jaffna Police Division over a family dispute. Meanwhile, during a raid conducted by the Police Special Task Force in Maravilla, a 24-year-old youth was arrested for attempting to sell a rare conch shell. With that, let's take a look at some more news across the island in brief. A 29-year-old woman was stabbed to death with a sharp weapon last evening in the Ariale area of the Jaffna Police Division. According to the police, the woman was killed over a family dispute involving the deceased and her husband. The 34-year-old suspect who committed the murder was arrested by the Jaffna Police. However, further investigations into the matter are currently underway. In the meantime, the remains of a person who was believed to be snatched by a crocodile has been recovered with the assistance of police lifeguards and wildlife officers. 
The police revealed that the incident had occurred last morning when the victim was bathing near the second bridge of the Manic River. The identity of the deceased remains unconfirmed. However, the police state that he is believed to be between 30 and 35 years of age. Katragama police are conducting further investigations into the incident. In other local news, a 24-year-old youth was apprehended by the Special Task Force in Maravilla while attempting to sell a rare conch shell. The arrest was made yesterday after Air Force intelligence officers were tipped off about the exchange. The rare conch shell, weighing 1 kilogram and 105 grams, nearly 16 inches in length and over 20 inches in circumference, was planned to be sold for 1.5 million rupees. Welcome back. Now on your business news, State Minister of Finance Srihan Semasinghe states that the government's total debt stock, the amount owed to both domestic and foreign creditors, has decreased by 2.76% or 803.2 billion rupees to 28,347.2 billion rupees as of the 30th of April 2024 compared to December 2023. The minister elaborated that within the total debt, foreign debt saw a significant reduction of 9.2% or 1113.4 billion rupees dropping to 10963.3 billion rupees meanwhile the total domestic debt stock increased by 1.8% or 310.2 billion rupees reaching 17383.9 billion rupees minister sam singh has said that the rise in domestic debt to the government's efforts to manage the debt budget rather without central bank financing he further highlighted that the strengthening of the exchange rate contributed to lowering the foreign debt stock. Now, according to the latest data issued by the Tourism Development Authority, Sri Lanka has welcomed 21,298 tourists from the 1st to the 4th of July. On the 1st of July, a total of 5,142 tourists have arrived in Sri Lanka, while 6,207 tourists have arrived on the 4th of uh, rather the 4th of this month. Indians have topped the list with 5,246 tourist arrivals recorded within the first four days of July, making up 24.6% of the total arrivals. The United Kingdom claimed the second spot with a total of 1,741 tourist arrivals corresponding to 8.2% of the total arrivals from the 1st to the 4th of July. A significant number of tourist arrivals were also reported from China, Australia, Germany, France and Canada. Within the first six months of 2024, Sri Lanka has welcomed a total of 1,010,249 tourists, already reaching the halfway point of the country's tourism sector target of 2.3 million tourists, tourist visits rather, this year. And now let's take a look at some corporate news in brief. National Development Bank PLC announced its achievement as the first Sri Lankan bank to be certified to the latest ISO 27001 2022 for their information security management system. This underscores the bank's commitment to uphold global standards and protect the information assets of the bank's customers, stakeholders and the bank itself. The ISO 27001-2022 certification is an internationally recognized standard for maintaining information security. Emirates announced special fares exclusive to Sri Lanka, enabling travelers from Colombo to enjoy journeys to Europe and North America. Inclusive of 20 popular destinations, the special fares allow Emirates customers to reap savings while enjoying the airline's world-class services across all cabins. In other corporate news, Tal Lanka Hotels PLC announced the resignation of Giridhar Sanjeevi, a non-executive, non-independent director of the company, with effect from the 30th of June 2024. In its disclosure, the company added that the resigned director did not hold any shares of the company as of the date of his resignation. That's all the news we have for you tonight. Thank you. Have a great night.